Just in case you thought the Ravens were really done at the running back position, this tells you everything you need to know. Team, keep it clean. Happy Friday. Um, I hope you all are doing really good. Uh, one thing that I wanted to say before we get into this video is that I really, really appreciate you all uh, in the positive environment that you all have created here uh, with Team Keep It Clean uh, because I see sometimes when people in the comment section, they'll put stuff that they're going through, um, some unfortunate situations that happen with them, uh, but y'all will be right there to lift them up. Um, y'all, just the, uh, the, the interchange that you have with them, um, your interactions with them, uh, it really gives them gives them a nice little positive boost, man. So I, I appreciate you all doing that, man. So y'all keep keep it up. Now, uh, with the Ravens, something that we want them to keep up is them having some pretty good records. Now, with them having pretty good records and pretty good success, uh, that comes at a price. Because in times like these, when it comes to the waiver wire, uh, your team is going to be pretty low on the list. Now, um, the Ravens, they put in a waiver claim for running back Royce Freeman, former Broncos running back Royce Freeman, 1,000-yard rusher just two years ago. Um, and, but Broncos were like, ah, yeah, this ain't working out for us. We're going in a different direction. Um, so they put in, Ravens tried to claim him, uh, but the Panthers, since they had a much worse record than the Ravens, than their uh, order of the waiver claim, the waiver wire was higher than the Ravens was. And real quick, just to explain the way that the waiver wire works, uh, it goes in the same order as the draft. Worst record, higher pick. Better record, lower pick. So the Panthers, they put in a claim for Royce Freeman along with the Ravens, and that's why the Panthers were awarded running back Royce Freeman. Now, I wasn't really too familiar with his game, uh, so I had to look him up, see what he was about, and I see that he would have been a, uh, a good fit. Uh, for this Ravens offense. Reason being because he makes quick decisions. He's not in the backfield dancing around, waiting, waiting. With, nope, he goes. That's it. He goes. He reminds me of, oh, you, wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. I, I, I just realized that. I was going to say he reminds me of Nate McCrary and the Broncos. They, they put in a waiver claim for Nate McCrary and they got him. So it's like the, the same running back. Because the way that Nate McCray would make those quick decisions, and, and the same thing too. One thing that I saw with Royce Freeman, he's not the fastest running back in the world, but he has really good acceleration. He gets to his top speed quick, quick. Uh, and that's the same way with Nate McCray, man. So it's, it's like they just, they, they, they dropped one, but they picked up another one that does the same stuff. But shout out to Nate McCray. I hope he does well uh, over there in Denver. Uh, another thing too, where he would have definitely been uh, a part of the Ravens game. And, and whether he was number two back, number three back, whatever. Whenever he was on the field, um, I, I, one thing I noticed about his game was his pass catching. He got really soft hands. He catches the ball naturally. It's not in any awkward position, anything like that. So that will go a long way. And when he catches the ball, he turns up field quick. Quick. He doesn't catch the ball and then have to adjust and then have to do all. No, he catches the ball. It's smooth. It's a very smooth process. And that also has to do with uh, where the ball is being placed as well. Um, but he, he would have been a really good fit uh, for this Ravens offense. But, <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <clears throat> but it's okay. It's okay. Um, because th this, this does let us know, though, that the Ravens, they're still looking. They're still looking, and they, they, they are trying to find that running back. They're trying to find another one. Uh, and all that talk. Remember John Harbaugh the other day? We're confident in the guys that we have. We're confident in the running backs that we have already on the squad. Yeah, we're good with our guys. We knew. I let, I let y'all know. A lot of y'all knew already that Harbaugh was just up there talking. That, that should have actually given us... The, the real confirmation that the Ravens were really looking uh, for a, an additional running back. That should have definitely let us know. I mean, with Nate McCrary, when he got claimed, that was also an, uh, an indicator that the Ravens would be looking for another running back. Since the only ones that they have on the roster are the three that are on the actual roster. They don't have any on the practice squad. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty obvious. Uh, and, 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 again, it just takes me back to before the draft with Eric DaCosta. Like, these GMs, at least with the Ravens, I can't speak for any other teams, but as far as the Ravens with Eric DaCosta and Harbaugh, they're not going to get up there and be like, hey, look, fans, other teams, any media, anybody watching this, this is our plan, 
And this is exactly what we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna do it. We're up here to let you all know. No, they're not gonna do that. They're not gonna do that. Why would they do that? Why would they show their hand? Why would they let everybody know what they're trying to do? They get up there, and a lot of times they tell us the opposite. They tell us the opposite. Or, and, and it's not even just so much the opposite, but they sort of try to disguise it. They, they, they say one thing, but all the meanwhile, they're they working on something else. And again, Eric DaCosta, he used what the fans were doing. He used it to try to twist everything and just try to mess with our minds and have us looking this way while the Ravens were going that way. Again, back to the wide receiver. So many fans complained about the wide receiver position. Wide receiver this, wide receiver that. Man, wide receivers, we need better wide receivers. We need more wide receivers. We need more quality wide receivers, wide receiver this. And Eric DeCosta responded to all that and said, man, I'm insulted. I am insulted. You guys keep talking about all wide receivers. I'm insulted by that. How could you? And he was so insulted that he went... And drafted a wide receiver, not only in the first round, but in the fourth round as well. Adding Rashad Bateman and Tylen Wallace. So he doubled down. Doubled down on wide receivers. So again, uh, these GMs, with well, Eric DaCosta as a GM and John Harbaugh as a head coach, they are not about to get up there and let you know what they are getting ready to do. So whenever they get up there and say, hey, we're doing A, you got to think that they're really doing B. If they get up there and say, hey, we're doing one, you got to get up there. You got to think that they, they're really going for two. So just something to keep in mind uh, going forward, even though I know a lot of y'all already knew that. But uh, one question um, that is out there, like, so now who? So now what? Who, who are the Ravens going to go for? There's been so many questions about Todd Gurley. There have been so many questions about Le'Veon Bell. Um, but I, I think with the running back position, like the Ravens, I think they're going to go for somebody more low-key, man. Somebody low-key who a lot of us fans are just not looking at them to try and get. And whether it's somebody that fans agree with or not, uh, one thing about whatever running back that they add. Same thing we've been saying, uh, that whoever's back there next to Lamar Jackson, that's going to boost their stock that much more. Now, um, I still do believe that Ravens, they'll be just fine with the guys who they have now, uh, with August Edwards, with a Tyson Williams, with a Justice Hill. But again, if you want to add somebody, it makes sense. You got to be prepared. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Gus and Tyson, they've been healthy. Justice Hill hasn't been healthy for the majority of training camp and preseason, uh, and he's just getting back. So we don't know what we know he returned to practice, but we don't know uh, what type of shape he's in, what type of football shape he's in. He hasn't taken a tackle uh, all year long. I mean, the, the football season's been pretty short so far. Uh, but you just you want to have somebody again that is ready just in case, that can pitch in, just in case, that can step up, just in case, so we'll see what these boys do, man, anyway, team keep it clean, I love y'all, again, happy Friday, I hope that everything is going good with y'all, I seriously do appreciate you all, thank you for watching, uh, thank you for sharing the videos out with your friends, your family, uncle, cousins, aunt, sister, brother, daddy, mother, whatever, uh, and thank you for making Team Keep It Clean uh, exactly what it is today. Like I said, a positive environment. We get on here, we talk football, and we are no experts. We are no experts. It's a lot of stuff that we have no clue on. It's a lot of stuff that we just do not know whatsoever. We are not experts, and we do not claim to be. Uh, but I appreciate you all uh, making this such a fun environment, too. But we can get here, we can learn from each other, and we learn a lot from each other. Well, I learn a lot more from y'all than y'all do from me, but I, I appreciate y'all uh, so much. Thank you for being patient uh, with us, uh, and thank you for being supportive, too. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I know I'm going to probably end up seeing y'all later today, uh, but y'all have a great day, and we out.